Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, welcome to this episode of Let's Chat. And today I have got Danelle van Jaarsfeld, aka the Warrior Woman, joining us. Danelle, how's it going? Good morning, Quentin. It's going great. How are you doing? All good, thanks. So I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, you can maybe share with us um, what it is that you do. Uh, it is, I always get it confused, it's, it's powerlifting, right, that you know. Uh, for, powerlifting, yes. It's not the weightlifting, so powerlifting, um, you've broken, I think, 14 world records, so I'll let you share a bit about that, but the first question, I'm sure I'm not, I'm not the only one that's going to ask this or has asked it, is how did you get the nickname Warrior Woman, if you can share that story with us. Sure, no, so Quentin, uh, in 2014, I was invited to compete at a World Championships for powerlifting okay. um, in South Africa. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't the top performer in the country. I was like number three or number four. But because it was hosted in the country, they allowed um, more participants to participate in, in the event. Okay. Uh, obviously, it was a big honor for me. Um, but as I said, I wasn't great in powerlifting. My coach at that stage said to me, you know, Danelle, you're never going to be a lead powerlifter. Let's just have fun. Okay. Um, so that was just, I'm, I'm wearing my, you know, my, my South African jersey. You're very proud to represent the country. But um, at the event, obviously nerves get to you. Yes. I'm inexperienced. I failed all three. So the, in powerlifting, you get three attempts at, okay. at squat and deadlift if you fail three you are kicked out of the competition okay and i'm called on to stage and i fell all three my first squats and it wasn't even a big weight i'm not even going to mention the number because i sucked that <laughs> um it's, it's probably not a big out. it's probably not a big weight for you but for for the average oak like me it's probably still quite impressive <laughs> So it was 110 kilos. Why? Well, there we go. <laughs> For me, it's and yeah. I was out, and I was so you know devastated that I actually I ran away, okay. physically ran away from the event. So my coach was like chasing after me, um, and there we we were sitting on on the on the on, on the sidewalk outside the event. It was in Poch, yes. and I, you know I said to my coach William, I don't want to feel like that ever again. Uh, I know I've got uh, the 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 mental ability to do better, yes. and um, he said, "Right, let, let's go for it." And from from that day, it started out with with sitting on a tire at the gym outside, meditating before I squatted. Okay. To um, doing it in a shorter time frame, but in an instant, I was ready. Okay. Going from 110 fail to squatting 230 last year. Sure. And it's, okay. just, it's just about accepting your limitations, but understanding that you know, as, a, as a person, I, I can do more, I, I can work towards it. If, you, if you've got the confidence and the courage, you can become unstoppable. Yes. And that's the, the Nile Warrior Woman was born. And that's my motto and that's what I live for, is, is to to prove myself wrong and, and, and teach other people to, to be the best they can be. Okay, tell me, when you said that now, was that at a specific event? Was that at the same event then where you came back and then basically... Um, so I was out of that event. So it was, oh, okay. Uh, oh, so you came back, back the following... Prepping, yeah, so at okay. the very next week, okay. we, we had a mental shift. Okay. Focusing on being mentally prepared because physically I could do the lift. I was yes. mentally prepared i was mentally okay. confident um i didn't believe in my ability i was fearful because you know this is heavy weights and working on getting myself mentally stronger than i am physically by starting out just just breathing meditating on it where that that practice grew more so than the actual physical and strength training okay cool and, and growing on that and focusing on on the mental prep um, for competitions thereafter, and, and, and since that competition, I haven't looked back. There, I was out of the comp last, where now I'm number one in the country, uh, 14 world records, and uh, at, at, at this stage, 35 South African records. Hell, okay. Um, and tell me, how, how long ago was this the event where you came back and did the 230, I think you said? Um, so 230 was uh, uh, two years ago. 
I guess it's quite recent, yeah. So quite recent. So last year, with 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 being on lockdown, it, it was a, a knock for not just for powerlifting, but I think for all sport. Yes. Um, you you didn't get the opportunity to to compete against others. And look, you can train, but you, you need that competition yes. to to you know you uh, measure yourself against someone else to see what you've the work that you've put in to to put it everything on the floor and 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 show the world and yourself that you, it's paid off so last year was a knock for everybody we didn't get an opportunity to compete there was one uh, right at the end of the year just a local comp but international okay. comps there was none yes and hopefully this year this will change that we can go international so i can um go to portugal this year to become the world champion for for powerlifting in when, portugal when is that um Danal, when is this so world champs this year is in november okay so you have to obviously qualify to go so that we i need to compete at nationals to qualify and then um go to worlds to to break some more world records but also work uh, i want to walk away with the title of, of world champ okay. and I'm, going to, I'm, I'm 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 turning 44 this year okay. and i'm competing as a, as an open lifter so i Jeez. compete with monsters. I don't know how many years I'll still be competitive as an open lifter. So uh, this might be my last chance. Okay. Um, so I'll still compete, but as an open open lifter, I I, I compete with against ladies that's 27, uh, 25 years old. Um, yeah. They recover faster. You know, it takes me a long time to stand up. Never mind, just it's quite big weight. <laughs> but I want to go for it. Yeah, I want to. I want to go. Awesome. To go and 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 walk away victorious as, as as a winner for South Africa, but also for myself. Now, tell me. I, I know we touched on this when we when we briefly spoke before. You you started quite late, and you've obviously touched on it now. But you started quite late, like a lot of top athletes in in various sports. Usually, from when they're five years old, were playing golf, yeah. or kicking a ball, or whatever the case may be. Um, explain to us so, yeah. how, how you got into it because you didn't do it from a young age. Yeah, so actually, um, my my background, um, I was actually born with a, a spinal uh, deformity where it's uh, similar to polio. Okay. My feet, I, I can actually not walk flat footed at all. Okay. So, you know, the normal heel toe, heel toe that you yeah, yeah, walk, like that, yeah. I don't do heel. I, I'm on toe permanently. So I was oh, okay. born. On the tippy toes, like a ballerina. Okay. Um, so uh, my my parents at first they thought it was cute, you know, a little yes. girl on her toes, dancing around, yeah. Correct. It didn't improve. Uh, we just see some orthopedic surgeons, um, and then they diagnosed me with this is a, um, a something that we would need to surgically correct by lengthening okay. the, the the muscles there, or uh, wearing uh, you know uh, braces like you know Forrest Gump. Yes. Okay. So my, my parents, uh, you know, the scarring for that, so they cut you from your ankle right up to your, on your, on your calf muscle to your right at the knee. So it's a very ugly scar and it would be on both my legs. Okay. So they opted for physio, years of physio and also wearing these, these braces. Okay. Which means number one, no one, I was never picked for sports. I can't run. Yes. Uh, um, and I also, I wasn't, Confidence was just not there. Walking around with braces from I was grade one, especially uh, that age is like your critical. It was rough. Eh? It was yeah, rough. Walking shit. around, battling, making friends, jumping was never an option. Running wasn't an option. Um, so I, I left out. So I didn't do any sport. High school, I said to my friends, "Stuff the braces," you know. Yes. Uh, I'm high school. I'm a teenager. Um, yes. But. I, I still couldn't put my foot flat down. So I wore in high school, I, I didn't wear the braces, but I still, I wore normal school shoes, but on my tippy toes. Okay. So I never, I never outgrew the problem. I still wear uh, high heels all the time. Okay. You'll never see me uh, flat uh, wearing no shoes because I can't put my foot down, my heel down. And the reason okay. why powerlifting was, was suitable for me is um, powerlifting you wear heel raises. Your shoe is right to get yourself like that in that position. So I can, uh, it was the first time that I could actually participate in sports because okay. the shoe 
gave me the, the, the ability to actually participate. And then I was actually very talented, very strong. I had the, the strength, the, the ability to participate. And, and I love competing, but I was never able to. So it was only for the last six or seven years that I've been able to, to participate in sport. Okay. Because sure. I have now, uh, I've got the ability to wear these shoes. So if you look at, at the powerlifting sport, you've got the three events, the squat, bench and deadlift. Squat, they wear the, 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 re, the heel raises, but for okay. bench and people don't, but I do because I can't put my foot down. Okay. All right. And I'm allowed to, so it's not against the rules. And that's okay. why I, I can actually kick some ass because I can wear the, the heel raises. That, that's that, it's so from being disadvantaged to getting the opportunity to being um, the best I can be. Yeah, that, that's quite an in, that's quite a cool story because it's um, like you said, it was a, a, a disadvantage or whatever you want to call it for you when you were younger, but now it works to your advantage now. Um, you know, quite often they talk about in motivational books and mindset stuff is that um, a lot of what you because from what I can pick up is I think if you were wearing those braces as a child, you probably found, you know, it made you a little bit, maybe broke you down then, but it made you a little bit maybe mentally strong that you didn't realize because you had, you had to deal with stuff that an average kid doesn't have to deal with. Yeah. So, no, but, um, you know, we, we all, and I, I tell people suffering is, you know, embrace it. Yes. Because you know, it, 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 it gives you the opportunity to get stronger, to learn, and it makes you, um, ready for whatever challenges come through, come through later in life. So I'm grateful for, for the, the challenges I had as a, as a youngster um, because it, it, it makes me appreciate my body more as well. You know, yeah, so, 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 yeah, it's, it's quite an important thing that you mentioned there now also is, is that um, I can't remember but, uh, which I, I was listening to a podcast or whatever and they actually talk about the pain that you're going through now, the stress or un unpleasant experiences and stuff is usually preparation for something further down the road. Um, and, you know, with your story is that you probably would never have been where you are right now, breaking four, 14 world records, if it wasn't for, like you say, the things that happened maybe when you were younger, um, that, that's prepared you for or, or helped no, you. No, I might have been a tennis player, you know, who knows? <laughs> Not a good one, but yes. Um, but yeah, so I, I never got the exposure. Um, I was never picked. Because look, running, I can run, but I'm on my toes, which makes me slow. Yes, you're not, also, not I ideal. tried once to, to uh, uh, prep for the comrades. But I couldn't even imagine, I'm on my toes. That must running be a cool. kilometer on your toes is fun. Running 10 kilometers is not so much fun. So I would yes. back away the shin splints because that impact on the toe on the shins wow. i was in action so i gave that up as a bad job um, and and kudos for the guys that can do it you know i've got tremendous respect but you know i'm not built for it clearly yes. not i can't even put my heels down yes. so the day I design running shoes with heels i'll be there who, who out of curiosity who introduced you to the the power lifting who had it so that it so it, it was, it was by fluke, actually. Oh, I, okay. I um, started this boot camp thing. Okay. With a lady at, at a gym and at St. Sithian's High School. Okay. And her husband was the powerlifting coach at the school. Um, and he just one day, we were... At St. City? At uh, St. Sithian's High School. Oh, okay, Germany. okay. Yeah at Saints. And okay. he said, why don't you just come try while you're waiting for the other girls to arrive? And my first, it was bench press. Okay. Uh, first bench was a qualifying standard for, for essays. But look, I think it's not, a, it was, it's bigger now. Those years, it was a, a, not a big sport in, in the country. So the yeah. entry level thing um, was like 40 kilograms bench, which for okay. women is, 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 is great. But um, I didn't break any world records now. The, the world record bench now is 140. Okay. So it, yes. it, it, it's involved, it's sports club. But it was just by fluke that I tried out. Oh my goodness, you've got some abilities. Okay. And I, I haven't looked back. So from there, then you just basically got involved in that. And that but was recent is, again, yeah. That was recent. It was recent. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, once I started training, I, I, I um, um, 
realized that I've got, I, I'm strong. Um, my body evolved, you know, you transform yourself because you're doing from doing nothing to doing a lot of strength training. So I did a bodybuilding show. Again, you can wear heels. So I could do bodybuilding. I was on stage. Yes. Um, it, it just, but it had to start with, with doing a sport and building that confidence and then allowing myself to, to, to try something new. Yes. So um, I wanted to mention also is you actually do have a day job as well. So overseas, I know quite often with South African sports, we did a lot of jet ski racing and that. And the guys in America, for instance, do it full time. And you you got a day job, you got to make money yeah. and then still go and compete with these acts that are doing it 12 hours a day. Correct. So I, you know, I watch these guys. They've got, they've got chefs preparing yes. their meals. And then they, they train for two hours and then they nap for two hours and then they've got a chef for bring their lunch and then they've got a massage guy that does it. So they just so worry yes, about training, that's it. That, that's anything they training. focus on. Yeah. And they get paid to do that. So yes, I work yes. full time one of the big corporates in the country, yes. but I love my job also. But it just means my days are a little bit longer. I get up at four every day. Yes. Early. And I, I do my meditations in the morning first. That's my start. I do my meditation Monday to Sunday. Okay. I train um, and then I, I do my day job. And then once that's finished, whatever time that may be, you know, things are hectic. Yes. Um, I've, uh, I, I, I might train for a second time the day, or I have some, some clients that I see as well that I help with coaching um, okay. from, from a powerlifting point of view, but also actually it's more from a, from a, um, a confidence and, 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 and a courage mentoring that i do more than oh that's fact, awesome physically moving is just it's, it's a, a byproduct yes okay um so i wanted to ask you so so on the meditation now you mentioned that twice you mentioned it in the beginning when when you had that competition and you mentally bombed out mm -hmm. um you obviously learned some some skills there because it is skills meditating mental yeah. preparation all skills the same as working out um, in the morning, when you say meditation, everybody's got different ideas or different ways of doing meditation. What is, just speak me through what you do okay. for meditation. So it evolves and it also depends on, on, on what I'm prepping for. Okay. So it might be that it would be just uh, 10 minutes of uh, box breathing. Okay. You know, I, uh, uh, ex Navy SEAL Mark Devine, and he introduced me to box breathing. And it's an incredible technique to, to center yourself, to breathe, to get calmness and, and focus. Okay, so cool. I do that even when I need to do a big presentation at the office. Okay, cool. I'm in a box breathing. So it depends where I'm at right now. My meditation is actually more visualization. Okay. So it's, it's 10 minutes in the morning where I visualize my, my, my competition. So I, I, I decide my goals for, for nationals. Uh, which is in August. I work my targets back from my what I want to achieve. So I've got daily targets that I need to reach in order to make those numbers. But my prep for that form psychologically is visualization. So I go through all nine lifts every day. So by the time I get competition, I've done them a hundred times. Oh, that's awesome, man. So, but it, it's detailed visualizations. So I'll go to Kitted, being kitted up, getting my singlet on, knees being wrapped, touching my shoes, putting my wraps on, my breathing, I smell the talk. I can so you feel and touch in that as well, yeah. I'm there. So yes. I'm there. By the time I get to the competition, this is like, it's second nature. I've done this a hundred times. Oh, that's freaking so awesome. Every now. day I do all nine lifts, including how I breathe, what I listen to, what my focus is, and that is for, for the prep for the competition. So that's every day, Monday to okay. Friday. Monday to Sunday, um, going through. Um, so because what you want to do for, for competing is you want to take your, your mind out of it. Yes. It's, you don't have to think to do it. It's, it, it's, it's ingrained in your being. Subconscious, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also my visualization is only success. I, never, I would never visualize failure. Yes. So completing the lift successfully, what it looks like, what it's felt like. So when I'm under the ball for the real thing, I know what I'm going to feel. I know what to expect. Um, and I'm going to stand and have three white lights saying good lift. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, I find that so interesting because there's so many various ways, but um, breathing always comes up. Breathing is a, 
you know, a lot of people that stress uh, that that um, um, struggle with anxiety and fear is uh, don't realize that with some breathing you can actually eliminate it without having to pop tablets. And, and you know, like and, and Quentin, it's like it's like common sense. You know, take a breath. Yeah. Take a breath. No, just just calm yourself down. Um, we don't get taught this, though. That's the problem. No, People true. don't teach you, you know what I mean, from a kid's age. Nobody teaches you to breathe deeply when you're stressed or anxiety or whatever, fear or whatever it is. No, that's right. So even uh, when we see clients in the gym, and, and you'll notice, like, they've got a hard set. And halfway through, they stop inhaling. They've got, they're holding like, everything. Your, your muscle needs the, the oxygen, you know? Yes. Your mind self to breathe and that's the same if you're stuck in traffic you know your, your children's naughty in the background uh your your mother-in-law is you know <laughs> breathe through it you know just breathe through it center yourself you know centering you know uh, centering yourself getting that focus you know the world can can be chaos around you and and you'll be calm you know in the in the storm yes. breathing is very, very very powerful and tell me um so, so how long your meditation in the morning? How long do you typically do it normally? Time okay, frame. So, time for, so at the moment it's it's ten minutes in the morning, and then I do another ten minutes at night. But you know, initially, you know, we've got monkey brain. Yes. So I, I, when I teach people about meditation, they say, don't be too hard on yourself. Yes. You know, start with a minute because what happens is you you close your eyes and you think, okay, the school, the lunches need to be packed. Yeah, I know your months. Like, so all over, so, yeah. And then then increase it to two minutes. You know, you, you don't have to be you know a, a hero on your first day. Increase it as you feel comfortable, and the more you do it, the more proficient you'll become. We we ten minutes, fifteen, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. It, it it's not a problem anymore. And what people yes. also realize is you can meditate while doing something else. Walking is beautiful for meditation. Yes, uh, yes. Don't listen to music, though. That's not meditating. You're listening to your jam and you're singing with <laughs> whatever it might be. It's not meditating. But walking, breathing, enjoying nature, it's yes. meditating. That's awesome. So if you, don't, if you say, uh, I'm too busy, but I can go for a walk, use that time to, to meditate, focus. You know, It's like getting the energy from the universe to, to carry on. Yes. So that's why I say it's quite interesting to get everybody's different because I've done quite a few interviews now and it's quite interesting how everybody does meditation slightly different, but it's, there's a common thread through it. It's basically mind and focusing and stuff like that um, because you touched on it now. What I always say with the meditation, which is pretty cool, is everybody thinks, oh, they chilled and they, they fine. And until they do a meditation for, like you say, 30 seconds or a minute and their mind is doing a hundred well, things place. and they can't do, they can't stop you while you, I oh, know I was like that in the beginning, Could, can't mm. stop it. Now I can focus and it's quite an interesting, but it takes time and it takes practice or whatever to, to be able to And do I think that. you need to, you need to be kind to yourself. Yeah. You know? So you, you're halfway through your meditation and you remember that you haven't prepped for the presentation that's happening at nine. It's okay. Yeah. You know, Gonna die. End your presentation. Your, your your meditation early. Go finish your presentation tomorrow. Will be better. Yes. Uh, it's learning to be more forgiving to because it'd be easy to forgive one and each other, but you know often we we neglect hard on ourselves. Correct. You know? ourselves, yeah. It doesn't make the meditation easier. You you're gonna try again tomorrow. So um, you also when we spoke uh, briefly before um, you mentioned that. An interesting that you, thing that you mentioned to me was that you mentor um, some other athletes and you yes. were saying how critical the mind is, is that on competition day, if that person basically says, mm, I don't know if I can do this, you like, ex explain that to us. I'll let it come from you rather. Explain okay. how critical it is. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've said to, to the, the, the people that I coach, but also to other athletes, um, the, the battle's won in your mind way before the bar's loaded and they call your name. Okay. So if, you, if, if you're warming up and you've got any doubt, any hesitation regarding what you're going to attempt, you've already failed. Okay. You've already uh, given your body that out saying, you know, uh, Danelle or Quentin, 
that lifts that you're intending, ish, uh, maybe you're not ready for it, maybe it's too heavy, maybe I didn't sleep well. Uh, you've already given your body the opportunity to say, okay, let's fail. Where if you've got the attitude, so, you know, I've got this, I've, I've worked for it, I'm confident, chances are that you're going to get that lift. Okay. But having that doubt up front, you, you've already given up. So my, my steer to, to the guys is, if you're not confident, um, change the, 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 if you've got time, change the, the, the attempt that you're going to open with. Because once you fail the first lift, yes, you you're done. much harder to come back to do the second and the third. But if you do the first one, because that gives you your confidence, then you can jump higher. You can make a 10, 20, 30, 40 kilograms heavier. But you need that first initial confidence. But it's about knowing in your heart, you've got this. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, that's why with my visualization, I don't visualize failure. I've got this. Yes, on the day, I might still fail. But yes. I'm not going to walk up to the, the bar doubting that I'm going to get that lift. It's crazy. Yes. So having positive self-talk, reinforcing it, having the confidence, having the courage, it, it's, it's, it's having zero doubts. Yes. Um, and that's what I, what, what I tell. Even when we train and... I'll ask uh, one of the ladies that trained that, are you ready? He says, you I don't know. Walk away. We are not, you are not going to walk in with that negative attitude, yes. trying to do this incredible thing, but your attitude towards it is negative. But that's true for anything else in life. If you want to write an exam, if you want to propose to your girlfriend, if you walk in there with a positive attitude, that energy is the universe can feel it. It attracts as well. <laughs> It attracts that positive energy, so you get rewarded. So if you if you put out the negative energy, and um, boy, oh boy, you'll be rewarded in kind as well. Yeah. So having that extreme confidence in your abilities and 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 having that positive self talk is very very important. Cool. Um, so it's it, what you mentioned now from when we spoke the first time, and you mentioned that I've actually been questioning myself on a lot of things. I've been doing business things and stuff like that, and going and actually that's been in the back of my mind of like, if you treat it the same way, you know, when you're doing a business presentation or whatever it is, if you, the moment you start doubting yourself, you mentally lost the battle, you're done. It's you're going to mess that presentation up. You might still mess it up, make no mistake, Correct. but Absolutely. your odds are a lot less that you're yeah. going to mess it up. Or going and if you mess like up, that. if you've walked in with that positive attitude yes, and you mess up, You'll recover. You, you, you'll make a joke of it. Yes, you just, yeah, you, 100%. It's, it's fine. not a downward spiral. But absolutely. You can recover. But also you've taught yourself to recover because your energy is good. And, 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 and you know, people are, are, are attracted to positive energy. They attract the Success it by the, as well, yeah. The, 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 the enthusiasm. So even if you stuff up, you'll be forgiven. Because they, 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 you know, they, they, oh, that's my personality at the office as well. People get so, you know, encouraged by my, my enthusiasm that they, they want to work with me. Yes. And if I mess up, they, 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 they'll be supportive. So understanding the power of positiveness and, and, and what, what it not just means for you, but also the people that you work with and the people that you're trying to, to get business from. Yes. No, that's, it's, that's awesome what you just shared there now. And like I say, I've already, it's been a little thing that's been in the back of my mind since we spoke the first time that I've actually been looking, going, if you doubt yourself here now, same as the, as you've got one chance here, same as with, with you, what you mentioned with the power lifting, you've got one opportunity. It's not like, I know when we spoke, I spoke with William as well. He, he explained to me briefly about, you know, um, in a soccer game, you've got 90 minutes and you can pass the ball maybe incorrectly a few times and still score a few goals and win the game. With the power lifting in that, you've got, it's the same, I suppose, as a business presentation. You've got one mm -hmm. chance. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you cock it up, you, you, you're done, you know? So I've, I've said to people, and people find it difficult to do, is that when you approach a business transaction, for instance, or yeah. a, a new client, your attitude must be like you've got tenure. You've, you've got... got Yes. Yeah. So you, 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 you cannot lose. But by having that positive attitude, I'm not saying be arrogant and rude. You know, you yes. still need to be light and professional. That, that energy gets rewarded. And approach life that way, like you've won the battle. Instead of being a victim, so, you know, uh, my history says that normally people don't, you know, yeah, you I'm sit 
up of failure over and over. You're repeating that cycle. It's a downward spiral the moment you start yeah. even questioning. So I, I do with the coaching and stuff also asking yourself questions. Quite often you get the, um, so it's important what questions you're asking or, or self-talk, because if you're asking mm. yourself, can I do this? Those are the wrong questions to be asking. Yeah. It should be, how do I do it? If you're not sure, yes. or those are much more um, positive. Oh, when should I do this? If, or not yeah. can, can. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've, you've, you've ruined it then basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so from here now, you mentioned you got the world champs, your your local competition, I think you said is in June this year, right? That That's the big- so, yeah, I hope trip. so. So, this, yeah. so for me, again, um, what people must understand from sport is that you can train in, in, in the gym as much as you like or on, on the rugby field or the soccer field. Yes. You need competition to, to, to actually get comp experience. Yes. Because the pressure from the environment, you cannot simulate that anywhere else. Yes. You, your, your heart rate will be different. The lights are different. The people Everything. are different. The, the equipment's different. And being able to deal with that under pressure, because it's easy when, when, you, when you know the, the people, you know the field, you know the pavilion, you know the coaches, you know the, the equipment, you're not putting yourself under stress anymore. Yes. And in, induce that stress is very difficult. So competing as often as possible for me, and that was encourage other athletes to do the same. It's the only way to get better at competing. You need to compete. Yes. Uh, um, there's a there's a comp in June that I'm I'm going to compete at. If it's going to be happening, people are talking about it being cancelled. I hope not. Okay. I want to travel all the way to Nelspray to compete there, but I will be competing. Okay. Not because it means anything for for uh, a qualifier. It's because I want to be under that bar, put my body under that pressure mentally, physically. And, and gain the experience. Then nationals will be in August, okay, where cool. um, in nationals, um, uh, some national records that I, I'm trying to, you know, wipe from the from the face of the from, existence from the from the from the board <laughs> um, completely. And um, also for nationals, I'm attempting to go down a weight class. Okay. So uh, the the records that I've got nationally and internationally is across, is uh, over three different weight classes. So going okay. all the way down, competing at fifty eight, going all the way up, competing at seventy two. Okay. So that's three weight classes. So doing yep. that also is uh, psychologically, especially being female, allowing yourself Eating. to get that, heavy, and then going all the way back down. So I'm. I'm they're attempting to go to a different weight class for the one in August. Okay, cool. Um, and, and, and then adding another a weight category under my belt, as well as the records that come with it. Okay, cool. Awesome, Danelle, we, we're coming to the end. I wanted to quickly ask you, though, also one last thing is, you've given us quite a lot of tips, but I want to ask if you can just give, if somebody that's maybe got some challenges in business, whether it's sports or business or whatever it is, three tips that you can give somebody to to help them with their mindset or or mentally um, prepare themselves so Quentin, oh, number one for me is yeah need to learn to be outcome independent so okay but whether you're gonna get the deal or get the money or get not the good. bill or, or or get the the, the record that is not what is relevant, what is relevant is putting in the work. If you get it, great, but that should not be what's driving you. Okay, Become awesome. So it's a, journey, it's a journey. Yeah, the moment you let go of the fact that the record's 250, and I'm just gonna go for what I'm doing the work, I'm gonna train hard. If I get it, great, but if I get to 230, I'm gonna be very disappointed. So be, teach yourself to become outcome independent. Oh, that's awesome, okay. Go for it, but but don't focus solely on 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 the result. Okay, cool. Um, don't check what other people are doing. Stay stay in your own lane. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Stay in your lane. So so your 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 business, your 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 colleague or friend from school's got a similar business, and he already has uh, three offices and two hundred staff. Very, not helping you. Yeah, that's it's not awesome. helping you. Uh, so you stay in your own lane. And the last thing is failure is important. Understanding and accepting failure, because that's the only way you grow. You know, when you're successful in life, 
you don't grow as a human being. Yes, you, you or in sport, it's only when you put yourself under pressure and you fail that you you evolve. Oh, so that's awesome. failure and failing as often as possible. That's awesome. That's yeah, that's yeah. Thank you. That that's really cool. Eh? Um, I hope everybody. I'm going to make a point of everybody must listen to the end. Yeah, I might even just um, excerpt some of this as well because that was three proper gems that you've given us there. So, um, where's the best place for people to connect with you? Where are you most active on social media if they want to connect? Um, where, where should they connect with you? So, Quentin, uh, yeah, on Facebook. I've got a Facebook page, uh, Danelle Warrior Woman. You can't okay. miss me. And then also very active on Instagram. Um, you guys can follow me there and I'll, if you want to reach out and I'll, I'll, I'll message you guys right back. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do with like with all the in, other interviews, guys, is I'm going to at the bottom, you'll be watching this on YouTube at the bottom. I will share all the, the links uh, for Danelle. Um, so you can connect with her there. And then, yeah, Danelle, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it because I know you're busy also with trying to do the job and the training and stuff like that. So I know how valuable your time is and I really appreciate that you made time for this. And um, yeah, guys, if you're watching this, please subscribe to this channel so you can catch the next interviews that I do. And yeah, thank you so much, Danelle. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Quentin. Anytime. Cheers, eh? Cheers, everyone.